Hey everybody, Brian Garcia, Meteorologist, National Weather Service, San Francisco Bay Area, Monterey Bay Regions. Welcome to the June edition of the Summer Heat and Fire Season Outlooks. Uh, this is the first one I've done for this year, so I guess it's edition number one. Well, let's get right into it. So if we take a look at the topics we're going to cover, we're going to take a look back at last winter and we'll talk a little bit about the previous winter too. We'll look at the current conditions, summer outlook. We'll talk about heat risk, which is a tool that we use here in the weather service. Look at the fire season outlook and then look at some tools that you can use. So this last winter was another wet winter, which is great. And if we kind of remember back to winter 22-23, we had an absolute just blast. I don't even know the adjectives to use for it of water during that winter we were so wet 22 23 and then this winter we're around a hundred percent of normal to date so far and remember the water year runs from october 1st through september 30th and this graphic takes us through uh june 4th so october 1st through june 4th so far we're sitting right around 100 percent of normal and i don't expect to change very much um going in through summer and into the end of the water year but two years back to back, lots of precipitation. That means lots of grass growing and lots of vegetation growth. And you've probably seen it in the hills and the mountains around the area. And you've probably experienced it with the pollen coming off all these things this spring. It's just been crazy. So it's great because when we look at the water year, we look at drought. So the drought monitor that came out today, that map on the left, we just have that little orange uh, just splash of uh, abnormally dry area. Otherwise, I've been a meteorologist in California for a while and I have never seen this map this clear. It is fantastic. That map over on the right was last year. I thought that was good, but this year is really just blowing my mind. So let's keep that up. Let's hopefully we can stay out of drought for the time being, but this is California after all. We are a boom or bust state and in all likelihood we will be back into drought at some point and probably some pretty deep ones so we should prepare for that one of the things that we like to look at in the weather service as kind of a driver of the weather is the el nino southern oscillation so whether it fluctuates between el nino or la nina or is around normal for sea surface temperatures across the tropical equatorial pacific so that area there um, we get all of this data. So the data here is on the left, upper left, this black dot. That is a February, March, April seasonal observation data point. So this tells us where we land relative to normal. And this is telling us that we are warmer than normal, which puts us in those El Nino conditions. And then the April observation here, this little gray square, while it came down off the February, March, April composite, it's still warmer than normal and we are still in El Nino conditions. From there, the models take all of that data and run it out. And so if we look at all these models running out, you can see us dipping down into that yellowish area. And then as we get to late summer, early fall sometime, some of the models go well into La Nina while others stay in that neutral range. This is something we're gonna have to watch through the course of the summer and into the fall to see how winter might shape up next year. Quick spoiler alert, La Nina's favor a wetter Pacific Northwest and a drier Southwest. So depending upon where you live in the Bay Area or Central Coast region, you might be well on the dry side or you might be far enough north that you could get clipped by some precipitation, but not all La Ninas are created equal. We'll really have to wait and see how this plays out. Looking at the summer outlook, though, we're going to look at June 1st, at June initially. That was weird, June 1st. We'll look initially at June. This is the temperature outlook on the left, precipitation outlook on the right. Let me orient you to all of the words on here really quick. Above simply means that there is a higher probability of being above normal, whether it's temperature or precipitation. Below simply means that there is a higher probability of being below normal for whatever it is, temperature or precipitation. So if we look at the graph on the left there, that is temperature and it says equal chances. Equal chances mean that there, there is no clear signal, whether it's higher probability of being above or higher probability of being below, it's effectively the meteorological equivalent of a shrug. There's just nothing 
really to hang our hats on. So that's temperature for the month of June. For precipitation, we're also in equal chances as well. But in June, we just don't get a lot of rain. We might get a little bit of coastal drizzle, but that's about it. So equal chances stands to reason for that. And even if we ended up above, it would literally be like a tenth of an inch or something like that. So there isn't a lot of rain this time of year. So let's go into the composite outlooks here. So the seasonal outlooks, this is for June, July, August. So when you slam those three months together, uh, this is what this, the season looks like. And this is really kind of the core of summer season. And you can see the entire West is painted with a higher probability of being above normal for temperature, equal chances for precipitation. Let's shift forward a month into July, August, September. Again, higher probability of being above normal for temperature and equal chances for precipitation. So in other words, what we're looking at here for summer, a hot summer is kind of what it boils down to. So speaking of heat, let's talk a little bit about heat risk, and then I'll show you where you can find all this a little bit later. So heat risk is a tool that was developed within the National Weather Service in collaboration and coordination with the uh, CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention. And what they looked at was climatology for temperature at a, hundreds of climate sites across the nation. And we have several here in the Bay Area. They looked at the climate sites to get climatology for temperature. They took CDC morbidity data and they overlaid the two. And so now we're looking at effectively how the body acclimates to temperature and when. So for example, if we hit, let's say 100 degrees in San Jose in uh, March, early season heat, the body hasn't acclimated to that yet. And so at that point, we may end up having an excessive heat warning out for that time frame. Now let's take that same temperature, 100 degrees in San Jose, and shift it to late August. In late August, we've had plenty of 90 degree days in San Jose. We've probably even had a couple hundred degree days in San Jose. And so the body has acclimated a bit better to those high temperatures towards the end of summer. And in that case, while there still may be a risk to human life, it might not be as a dramatic of a risk to human life as it would have early season coming out of the cool or cold winter. So that late August example, we may only have a heat advisory out because climatology even is warmer at that time of year versus March, right? So the deviations off of climatology aren't as great in August in our example than it would have been in March. So this is how heat risk is a smarter way to look at heat advisories and excessive heat warnings it takes in, into account climatology of an area as well as the body's ability to acclimate and what time of year it would acclimate by for, um, for heat. So it's a really great tool. We'll go in and look at it here in just a few moments so that you can see what we're looking at and where you can find it as well. So there's another reason why all this summer and heat matter and it's because of evapotranspiration. And this ultimately leads us into fire season. Evapotranspiration, if we are hotter than normal, all of those fine fuels that we had pop up in the spring and caused all the allergy problems in the spring, uh, and even some of the heavier fuels, some of the uh, uh, smaller trees and even some of the moderate, moderate sized trees, they'll start to transpire all of this moisture out and they'll dry out. Essentially with the heat we get put in the kiln and everything gets cured. And then the evaporation out of the soils, you get all of the uh, the moisture evaporating out of the soils. Now it's when we start to see the ground crack and things like that. So there just isn't the availability for moisture in the soils for the vegetation to grab onto and continue to rejuvenate itself. Happens every year, this is what happens. But when we're hotter for longer, that happens quicker and we get dry we get more dry than we typically would so we'll have to see how this plays out with that uh, climate prediction center forecast of being higher probabilities of, of being above normal for temperature for the bulk of the summer 
So when we look at fire season, August, September, October, we're starting to nose into fire season here. Um, a higher probability of being above normal for temperature and equal chances for precipitation. And again, precipitation uh, normals are, are pretty much zero. Uh, they're, they're darn near zero, if not zero, in a lot of areas across the Bay Area and Central Coast. So equal chances make sense. But we're going to stick with that heat out here. Then we get into September, October, November, the Climate Prediction Center finally starts peeling back that higher probability of being above normal for temperature off of the North Bay uh, coastal regions. But the rest of the Bay Area and Central Coast remain in that just a little bit leaning above. So you can see they're leaning above a little bit higher probability of being above normal for temperature. So check this out, that below normal, that uh, higher probability of being below normal for precipitation starts to creep up from the desert southwest into the southern half of California. And you can see that above bullseye up in the Pacific Northwest, that's the early signal of La Nina. So uh, the Climate Prediction Center is leaning on climatology for La Nina and what it might look like. So our friends up at the United States Forest Service Geographical Area Coordination Center, otherwise known as the North Ops or uh, GAC, the North Ops GAC. Uh, they put this out the first of every month. So the first of June, this got issued and I'm not gonna read all of the bullet points for you, but uh, we'll just go to the next slide because the next slide kind of shows it all. So in June, July, they have most of their service area and, and uh, the core of our Bay Area here and below normal for significant fire potential. And even down on the Central Coast, once you get down to San Benito and Monterey, same type of thing shows up. Now, when we get into August, September, you see all those greens go away and that just goes gray. That is the normal risk of significant fire potential. So that means we're getting into normal. I'm gonna be really curious once we get July 1st and we start to see the outlook for October, ultimately what that looks like, because uh, we have had two years of really, really benign fire weather conditions, and I'm really concerned that we're, uh, we're gonna to have to pay our dues this year. And we've already seen a couple fires pop up and cause issues in the grasses. So those grasses are dry, they're cured, uh, even onshore winds, winds from the ocean to the land can get those things running. So don't be that spark and keep uh, keep everything without fire on it so okay so some tools you can use we're gonna go do some web surfing here so I'm gonna show you some things that you can share with your friends families and neighborhood and some things you can look at along the way so let's pop this over here and we'll bring this over as well so this is the weather.gov slash safety campaign uh, pretty slick little web page here and at the top it goes through the different seasons so it has winter spring summer and fall and then it also has hurricane season right there in the middle so we're going to take a quick look at summer here and in here you can find a lot of different stuff from uh, videos explaining different things to presentations uh, but the thing that we like to use a lot are the infographics so you'll see us post these on social media and there are a couple here for some basic summer safety things but you can also click on the summer hazards in infographics so let's take a look at heat really quick and you can see all of the heat infographics here and you are welcome to go in here grab these post them out on your social media and share them with your friends and family or community uh, community organizations so that everybody has an idea of uh, what they might be able to do to help protect themselves from some of the summer hazards. The other piece of information here that the National Weather Service has been working on is additional languages. We've been doing Spanish for a little bit but we are delving into other languages because well we're not just English speaker speakers in our country anymore we have a lot of different languages which is great and so if you come here literally I just went to additional languages clicked on NWS translate pops up this other page and this is specifically for the infographics this is a fantastic page to go to in the upper right you can see a little drop down has a bunch of different languages here that you can go to so let's take a look at Samoan really quick look at that it translated over into Samoan and now let's go over to heat and you can, oh, they may not have ones translated for Samoan yet. Um, or it's just not loading up. Okay, let's try Spanish. I know there are ones for Spanish. 
So yeah, apparently they're still training the system to be able to do this. So here are some Spanish ones for uh, for for marine, and here are Spanish ones for heat. So again, you can grab these and use these with uh, your family or community organizations. Let's go to our webpage. So this is literally weather.gov slash Bay Area, or in this case, it's weather.gov slash MTR for Monterey, but I was typing Bay Area anyway. And on our homepage, you can hover over the menus up here and oh, under forecast, just go a couple down, you'll find experimental heat risk. This is what we were looking at earlier in the slide deck. And I like to have boundaries on my items, so I'm gonna throw those on. And so you can see the counties outlined there now. And up here in the upper left, days of the week. And so we're just gonna click through these days of the week and see how the heat risk migrates. And you can see by Tuesday, it comes back, and then Wednesday, it kind of pulses back. But look at that, Tuesday, we get some orange in there. So if we go up by Lake Berryessa someplace, way up there in Napa County, and just do a quick click, you can see that it has orange every day of the week and it gives you the high temperature in the 90s, even 100 on Tuesday, and it gives you the minimum temperatures as well. And then over on the bottom left, you can see here the different categories and those different categories are listed out with what they mean. So you can learn a little bit about what each category means. Essentially, it goes from green little to no risk from heat expected all the way to magenta where the entire population that doesn't have access to adequate cooling or water is going to be at risk of heat stroke or uh, heat exhaustion even. So there is, uh, there's heat risk and if you want to know more there is a ton of information in here that you can read on your own and really kind of do a deep dive. So let's go back to our homepage here. One last spot that I'll show you that I really like to watch during the summer just because it's simple and it's powerful. Under current conditions, you can click on observations and it'll bring up this nice map and it's all in layers. So you go up over to the upper right. Uh, again, I always like to put the, the states and the counties on there. Gives, gets me a little oriented exactly where I'm at. And you can see the weather station start to pop up. And as you zoom in, the density increases, or you can come over into that menu and click all and have the density really increase. And there's a lot of information there. Um, and if you're like me, sometimes you need to blow up the font a little bit to be able to see something that looks like an ink blot test. But under display here, you can also come over and just list air temperature, for example. And so it'll bring up the air temperature and it's color coded too, which is beautiful. So you can see where the cooler sides are right up along the coast and all the way to the warmer sides out there in uh, like Nacio Valley and uh, um, uh, Discovery Bay, those areas up in Contra Costa County. So it's, it's just a nice way to be able to see what's going on. And if you wanna see how hot it got during the day, for example, you can just roll down here and say max temperature since midnight. So what has been the maximum temperature that that station has hit since midnight? And there it is. And vice versa for min temperature or max wind gust um, or relative humidity even. So there's just a lot of information that you can find here during the winter season. I watch precipitation a lot too. Um, but it's just a really useful tool to use throughout the season, um, whether it's for temperature, wind, or even rainfall during the winter months. So let's pop back over here and we did that. Um, and well, actually that's it. So hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video and learning a little bit about what tools that you can use this summer so you can follow along at home with what we're forecasting and what it could potentially mean to you. Um, and also, you know, hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this and learn a little bit about the seasonal outlook. Make sure you share it with your friends and family and community organizations. And most of all, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and be good to one another. See everybody. Bye.